Hello everyone, I'm Silly Sunim, and this is Nova Drift. Nova Drift is a two-dimensional space shooter game with some roguelike elements attached to it. And I've greatly enjoyed these last few days, so I thought I'd play it a bit for you folks at home. You start with a basic craft, you thrust, you rotate, you shoot. Destroying enemies and objects sometimes gives you little upgrade crystals. You can see at the bottom of the screen, the little blue bar is my shields, the red one is my hull health. Both will slowly regenerate time, and if your hull reaches zero, you explode. Alright, first upgrade point. Your first category selection is always going to be the same, as will be your second and third. The first choice you get is your weapon. In this case, I have the choice between salvo, heat seeking missiles, grenades, or flat cannons. You can also choose to decline it, keep your basic weapon, or reroll, which gives you three different options. Let's try rerolling. Now we have a blade, a lance, and a dart. Hmm. Let's see if we try something different. Ah. Now we can go something more close in. Again, you'll notice we got grenade. But these two are different. Pulse, a close in weapon. Vortex, a charge weapon. Let's go with Vortex. It's a fun one. As you can see, I now charge my weapon instead of firing all the time. And release a little Vortex. You'll notice that it pulls in the enemies a little bit. But you also notice that when I charge my weapon too much, I start taking a little bit of pull damage. So you can't just sit there with your weapon charged all the time. You have to fire it, or you will slowly kill yourself. You can see the advantage of pushing the enemies around, though. Enemies and projectiles sometimes will get sucked into the vortex and take extra damage. You also see that the enemy takes burn damage. The white damage is the weapon hit damage. But the yellow damage is burn damage. In the case of this vortex, it's a great deal of burn damage. <laughs> and I have enough upgrade points to choose some next modifiers. In this case, I get shields. Bastion only protects you in one direction, but it's very strong. Good for ramming into enemies. Warp. When destroyed, the ship teleports you a short distance away. And it creates a pulse at the source where you used to be, as well as where you are uh, when you arrive. That's a pretty fun one. I like Warp. Shockwave is also an interesting one. It's a relatively weak shield. But it releases shockwaves every now and again. They ebb and flow around it, which pushes enemies and uh, projectiles away, as well as doing a little bit of damage to them. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with Warp this time. Now here we get to choose Body Type. Each Body Type will give you certain advantages and disadvantages. Spectre is good for certain weapons, but not for Vortex. Vortex does, uh, will reveal yourself when you're charging your weapon. So it's cloaking ability, not very helpful here. Assault is helpful because it increases your charge rate. Rate of fire increases your charge of your vortex. However, I am curious if I can work a very specific build with Architect. Architects can only deploy a construct, which is something you create from your ship, at one at a time. However, that construct is more powerful. What I'm interested in is the mind effect and blast radius. You can create mines with vortex that will create even more mini vortexes around it. 
It's a very powerful build, but hard to pull off. But let's try and see. Hmm. Now what do I want here? I have six rerolls, so I could look for mines right away, or I can just stick with what I have available here. Each of these are good in their own way. I can increase my rate of fire, the velocity and damage of my projectiles, my maximum hull, my shield cooldown, my shield effect radius, or just improve my thrusters, or I can get a wild mod. In this case, one that increases my rate of fire and gives me a burst fire. Burst fire means you fire again after your first time, but it also means that you have to wait longer for your weapon to recharge before you can use it. Now you might notice a color theming here. Shields are this color, weapons are this color, engines are this color, hull this color, wild mods this color. You might also notice that the non-wild mod ones have little trees over here. Once you open the tree, you open up the possibility of getting either one of these. And once you select one of these, you have the possibility of gaining the fourth and final one. Let's reroll. See if we can't find those mines. And speaking of, there we are. Again, you might notice that there's a color theming bonus here. Not bonus, but theme here. In this case, constructs are this orangish color. The wild mod here is ally specialist. But again, I'm an architect. I can only build one at a time. I probably want to focus on just one. In this case, I want the mines. Blast radius could also be good here. That would make my vortexes even larger. But I think getting that mine out as quickly as possible is the best. I want to go for loaded mines. On detonation, your mines fire your weapon in a radial spread. That's what I'm looking for. Hmm. Less happy with these. I could go with magnitude. That just increases my weapon size. It also increases my blast radius and its damage. Also gets me towards charge shot, another very handy ability. It would increase my charge rate. Let's go with magnitude. You may now so notice also that my ship color changed. What you choose for your shields will determine your ship color as well as your weapon color. So that might be some consideration you make <laughs> when you're deciding what weapon to choose. You will also see a color theme with the enemy. Generally enemies of certain shared colors have some kind of shared characteristic. Yeah, and there are the loaded mines I was seeking. You want to take them? On detonation, your mine fires your weapon in a radial spread. Hmm. I could go for minefield. Increases my mine assembly speed. Sure. Increase blast radius, perhaps? or go for survivability in terms of hull and armor. Let's go with blast radius. In this case, I think I will choose burn damage. Increased burn damage means I will do more damage over time to my enemies. Since I'm using vortex, which, which uses a lot of uh, burn damage to targets, 30 per second base. Pretty good, I think. Hmm. I'm tempted by payload. Slower charge, but more blast radius and damage. Caliber. Heavy caliber here. Not bad. Slows my rate of fire and velocity, but increases the damage and projectile size. I'm not fond of the weapon recoil as much. Let's go with payload here. Again, the vortex will suck in nearby enemies. Oh, these enemies are going to die very quickly. 
<laughs> Enjoy the popcorn stuff there. Time and release a little vortex of its own when it did it. Hmm. I could get Retribution, which is the final aspect of the Mind Tree. When you take hull damage of at least 10%, you automatically deploy a mine. Good to help you survive a little longer. Charge Shot. That improves the charging of my weapons. Very handy but also unlocks charged mines. Your mines charge your weapon at 100% of your charge rate. In other, words, my, in other words, my mines will charge at a much higher rate, even though I will lose the advantage of charge shot. Overall, let's go for that. I think that will help a great deal. Hmm. Here I think I will take orbs of discord. Orbs of discord are little objects that will orbit you and will damage nearby enemies and you get more for each two wild mods you own. Now these can be very handy just in general, but they can be specifically handy for something like a vortex build. Because what if a small enemy gets near me, but I don't want to use my fully charged vortex weapon on them? Instead, I can rely on my orbs to take care of it for me, and I don't have to use my weapon on them instead. So let's go with it. Again, you will notice with Vortex, the more it charges, the more it pulls in enemies. Or in this case, debris. That increased damage and rate of fire is really helping my mines charge much more quickly than they can. Shield breaks, I warp away and do damage both to where I was and where I teleport to. So that can be very handy. Then these went into my weapon. This is a fun little build. I do enjoy this one. It's hard to pull off, but it's very entertaining. And I am getting lucky today in these upgrades because there's my charged mines. I will happily take those. Now what else do I want with it? Maybe it is finally time for survivability. Increase my hull. I'm often charging my weapon, so this regeneration is less helpful than it might be otherwise. I think I'll just get armor plating. It's just a flat reduction in damage I take. Good for small hits like mines, some of the smaller projectiles, things like that. Let's go with a bigger blast radius to make my vortexes even larger. Um, I do believe that was supposed to be my first boss, but I do believe it was also killed by those comets. So, uh, okay. I... I have never seen that happen before, but I will gladly take it. You will have to see it in another episode. <laughs> oh me. Now this corrosive stack ignites my enemies, but decreases my weapon damage. I might want to take that. Hmm. This would increase my base stats and powers, but make every enemy I receive from now on an elite or champion variant. It might be a bit too early for that, but if I can survive well enough in the late game, that is an option. I'm thinking more like Rupture. When targets are destroyed, it deals blast damage to other nearby targets, up to 3% of the enemy's hull. Well, that's rude, running into me like that. 
So uh, fun to have. It's also quite dangerous. You will often be running into enemies because of it, because they get pulled into your vortex. But you can have a lot of fun with it. Oh my! Here are some options, indeed. I would normally take purification here. It decreases my flat weapon damage, but. The greater burn damage and ignite duration usually more than makes up for it with a vortex build. But I think I'm going to take Revelation. The next recursive wild mod you choose is gain three times instead of once. That is very helpful in this particular instance because I have Orbs of Discord. Orbs of Discord are going to take advantage of not only this, but will also get the three I choose next time. Let's go with that. Now there's Rancor, which increases my hull plate and weapon damage and gives me one plating, but decreases my thrust. Hmm. Could be useful. I think I'll take it for the maximum hull and weapon damage stuff to go. Also make up for the decrease I have with the uh, burn damage modifier that I've been taking down. And there's the purification I was looking for anyway, so I will happily take that. All the enemies being pulled into my mind. Always lovely to see it. Hmm, is this where I spend? My revelation on heavy caliber decreases my rate of fire so they charge more slowly decreases the velocity so they don't go as far but the projectile size increase means they'll pull in more enemies and they'll do more flat damage weapon recoil is going to be a problem but overall I think I think I like that plus it instantly gets me those orbs Let's try it out and see. As you see, I now have a recoil to push back when I fire, but my vortexes are much larger. Well, this is our second boss. I'm sorry you didn't get to see our first one, but here is round number two. Just run. Or at least, not directly in the enemy. Like so. It doesn't do anywhere near as much damage. <laughs> I'm probably going to get killed by the enemy being sucked into my vortex right after I fire it. But it will be a glorious death. Do a great deal of damage to you and suck it in my enemy. And unfortunately, also, as you can see, my career is very, very annoying. Go away, no one likes you. 
unfortunately, it doesn't always suck in the very end. Well, some will more resistance to it than others. Okay. Uh, yeah. So far, I like this build, though. Doing pretty well. You should remember that. Oh, well, the comments come along and help me out. Comments can be a blessing far more than a curse in many a run. Just because of the ways they can deal with lots of enemies that happen to be having shields or just are very large. <laughs> that one did not survive very long. I can increase my construct speed as well as its hull. That gives it more charge time. Not a bad option. Another heavy, heavy caliber. I don't think I want that. On the other hand, I might want efficiency now. I'm not firing my weapon as often. I'm using the uh, mines to do more damage. So that gen regeneration would help out. I think I want hyper metabolism instead. 45% regeneration rate for less shields and hull. I've taken some hull bonus modifiers, so I have decent hull size. I think I'll go with it, and also help get some more orbs. Not bad. I can increase my damage for blast, but decrease radius. I kind of like where I am now, just sucking in as many enemies as possible. I increase my fire rate, increasing the charge time. Or I can get Scorching Wake. I already have burn damage modifiers after all, and this makes my thrusters launch fireballs that do burn damage to any of my nearby enemies. Let's go with that. Hmm, I don't want this. Decrease blast radius, projectile size, no. I think I just want velocity. Perhaps it's time for some survivability in the turn form of galvanic outburst. When you take a shield hit, discharge a bolt of energy in the direction of the offender, dealing burn damage. Again, I have modifiers that increase burn damage. It also increases my shield damage resistance by 1% and my shield effect power, in this case the explosion from when I warp. any sort. Ah, Self-destruct. Does more damage when my mines explode. Not a bad option. Purge. I'm not really crashing any enemies on purpose much. I think I want more survivability. Another galvanic outburst. Better shield cooldowns perhaps. Or just go for shield durability. Hmm. Or I can get Twin Strike, but right now I'm worried about dying. Let's just go for maximum. Survive longer fight. Stop bringing the end my punch. Here's our third boss. But first, let's get an upgrade. Help do some more damage. I could get barrier. Decreases the max damage that my shield can take at a time. Increases maximum shields, but slows down their cooldown. I can get more armor stacks. Could be handy. Or I can do more projectile velocity. And my projectiles do more damage the more distance they have from me. Could be very handy with something like Vortex. Let's see if I have some me out here. Or if I just made a great mistake by not taking more survivability. did go better than I 
I had any right to do. All right, what should we do now? I can go down this tree, which increases both crash damage and target damage. But what I'd really be looking for is rate of fire and weapon damage flat increases down here. Sure. Didn't get to steal my kill this time, Comet. I uh, got yeah, it first. My mom. Fire that one too close to the enemy. Get a little more room. really help out. Might want to get some of those. Hmm. Again, I can go with barrier. I don't know if I want that cooldown reduction, but that would help against major attacks. We'll try it out. What's the worst that happen? Just uh, reflexive shields, increasing my maximum shield, and if my shield takes a hit, your shield discharges damaging energy in the direction of the offender. Night pairs nicely with my galvanic outburst. Or I can just take better regeneration. Or I can do more damage and increase my rate of fire. All good options. I like this targets at less than or equal to 12% of their max hull are destroyed by weapon hit or crash damage. That's very handy for the tougher enemies you're fighting. But I would also love this. Uh, let's go with Terminator for now. I'm worried about the boss fight. Of course, I also need to survive in that boss fight, or even just to get to it, so... We shall see. We shall see. There, I got pulled in. Hopefully I'll die. So far, so good. <laughs> that was some poor piloting on my part, to be sure. And you'll finally get to see what this enemy can do. He creates a little vortex and teleports away, using those little orbs as a shield. Hmm, what do I want here? Increase my maximum haul for reduced thrust. Maybe not the worst idea in the world. Could go for an engine upgrade. Also not a bad idea. Hmm.
this is a very fun little build. Alright, what now? I can increase my shields, my rate of fire, my hull regeneration. Hmm. I think I just want that shield increase. I've turned it down several times. I've been worried about my shield standing up to these later enemies, so. It would be charming to turn it down at this point, I think. boss of the game so far. Remember this game is in early access so this will not be the last enemy. It's just the last one they currently have. We can teleport around. Fire a railgun at you. Summon allied reinforcements. As well as doing this burning charge attack. Minds are pulling them in so fast, I need to run away from them to avoid getting squished by the enemies being pulled in. Oh, there's something I want. Mastery. Just gives me a 5% improvement to weapon damage, projectile velocity, size, spread, blast radius, and rate of fire. Just makes my weapon better pretty much every way. Larger ones are more powerful variants. At least of this enemy type. With survivability becoming more and more of an issue, maybe it's time for just a shield increase or adaptive armor. Both have their advantages. Hmm. This one takes longer to build up. This one I get right away. Again, I can get hull regeneration or increased armor. Let's go with hull regeneration. I can use a little bit more of that. Give me close to hull Thank you. 
my board base. Now that we're past the uh, final boss, sometimes we'll get multiple bosses together, or bosses with other enemy waves. So, uh, yeah, now things become more interesting, I would say. Singular Strike. I don't know if this overall works well for me, but I do like Blitz. Targets of full hull take more damage from weapons, and you just get a flat weapon damage increase. I should also get a phone ringing in the background. My apologies for that. I'm glad this one worked out. It can be hard to get off the ground, but once it does, it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. That improved weapon ability right there is helping out a great deal. Take care of a lot of these smaller enemies for me. Now things get interesting. I can increase my shields at the cost of my hull. I don't think that's worth it right now. I can do last stand. If I die, I'm reborn, but only with 25% of my total max hull and shields. But then I earn 100% experience points. I will probably die very quickly. This build does not have much survivability right now. But then again, I will probably die very quickly shortly thereafter just because of that lowered shield and hull max. Let's reroll. I've been saving up lots of rerolls. Now's a good time. Slower rate of fire and assembly speed, but faster shield cooldown. Not bad. I don't want another one of these. That makes my own not bad. Far too hard. Far too high. Rapid reconstruction, no shield. I don't think I can take that one. Rampage, increased damage and whole shields, but I gain constant flat thrust power. 
Again, I'm already having trouble running into enemies all the time. That's not going to help me control my movement. Could do kinetic boost. Faster I go, the more damage I do. If I'm just running away from my vortex, not a bad idea, maybe. Now, what I want with the rest of these emergency systems, again, survivability. Sure, let's go with that. Now, you probably already have noticed, but the more levels you earn, like any decent RPG system, the more experience points you take to get to the higher level. Early on, just one or two, or additional level. Now, it takes significantly more. What else we have here? Ah, got caught on the trail, couldn't get away in time. Oh, still, I got to show off one of my favorite builds, lots of fun. Uh, I hope you all enjoy that one. Uh, give this game a check out if you're yourself, if you liked it, because it's very colorful, it's very simple to get the basics down, but it, it's very... Got a lot of variety, and they're going to add even more as it goes on. They already have some very interesting ideas for fighting types, for example, and weapons. So, um, if you like what you see, give it a try yourself. It's a lot of fun. And I thank you all for coming by.